I'm getting out of bed because I don't want yeah. the magic to end, right? right. They want to they want to sustain that state so that the old reality that they've lived in begins to transform into something new and because there's no longer a vibrational match with everyone and everything in their past present reality mm -hmm. there's a vibrational match to their future and mm -hmm. now their future is starting to give them signals do our what's more powerful than our thoughts or our, our emotions and do our emotions change our thoughts or do our thoughts change our emotions yeah the answer is yes the answer is both I mean um, thoughts uh, to me produce an electrical charge in the quantum field and feelings produce a magnetic charge in the quantum field. Mm. Thoughts, wait, thoughts produce a what? An electrical charge. Okay. And feelings produce a magnetic charge. And how you think and how you feel broadcasts an electromagnetic signature that influences every single atom in your life. The thought sends the signal out. Now think about this and the feeling draws the event back. So you mm. could have the intent that you want wealth, you want health, you want success. That's your intent, that's your thought. But if you're waiting for the experience to happen, to feel it, then you're not drawing the experience to you because you're not feeling the emotion, right? So then teaching people once again how to balance their thoughts and feelings because you can, you can enter that cycle either place. Sometimes we do a meditation, we start opening our heart, we start elevating the body's energy, and then those emotions can drive certain thoughts of your future. Mm -hmm. Other times, you open your awareness, you create brain coherence, you have the vision of your future, you begin to emotionally experience it. However you want to jump on that cycle, uh, and then sustain it, because the longer you're conscious of that energy, the more you're drawing your future to you. Ever heard of the mind's remarkable power in the placebo effect? Picture this. You're feeling under the weather, so you take a medicine, only to later find out it was just a sugar pill. It did absolutely nothing. Surprisingly, it turns out that about half of the effectiveness of pharmaceutical drugs can be credited to this phenomenon, where the mind, not the pill, does the healing. But hold on, there's a flip side to this mind-bending ability. Enter the nocebo effect, where our thoughts can actually make us sick. Every stressful thought acts like a dose of a nocebo pill, shutting down our immune system. Imagine this. Doctors give stress hormones to someone getting an organ transplant, deliberately turning off the immune system to prevent rejection. Now, in our everyday lives, many of us are stuck in a stress loop fueled by financial strain, fear-mongering news, unstable homes, soul-crushing jobs, and toxic social media. This ongoing stress triggers the nocebo effect, keeping us in a perpetual state of unease. Consider this. Our well-being is like a mirror reflecting how we see the world. If we grasp how our emotions impact our biology, we gain the power to reclaim control over our health and align with our mind, body, soul, genetics, and environment. Here's the essence. You're not a helpless victim of your genes or surroundings. You possess the incredible ability to shape your reality and transform it. It's high time to reclaim that power. Stress is a state of mental or emotional strain arising from challenging circumstances. But how does different stress affect our brain and body in the long run? Stress typically emerges when we can't foresee the future, lack control over a situation, or perceive a looming threat. While you may not control every external event, the question arises, can you learn to master your inner world of thoughts and feelings? Stress comes in three flavors, physical stress, chemical stress, and emotional stress. Physical stress is the aftermath of life's little surprises, traumas, accidents, falls, you name it. Chemical stress, on the other hand, is the silent ninja attacking through flu, bacteria, viruses, wonky blood sugar levels, toxins, and even our daily grub. And of course, emotional stress, the heavyweight champ fueled by family drama, second mortgages, single parenting, traffic jams, the whole stress parade. Now, whether it's a tumble down the stairs, a nasty bug, or a heated argument, these stressors throw your brain and body into chaos. 
Stress, my friends, is when your system loses its cool and gets out of balance. Enter the stress response, your body's inner superhero trying to restore order. Picture this. You sense danger, maybe a lion or a deer fleeing from coyotes. Boom! Your body flips the switch to the fight-or-flight mode, mobilizing a surge of energy. Heart pounding, breath quickening, all systems go for survival. But here's the catch. This setup is for short-term survival. Zebras outrun lions, deer dodge coyotes, and life goes on. However, in the modern jungle, stress can take different forms. Maybe it's not a T-Rex chasing you, but a demanding boss, a nagging co-worker, or the infamous traffic. The problem. When the stress switch is flicked on and refuses to turn off, that's when the trouble begins. Imagine running from a T-Rex, totally legit to activate the fight-or-flight mode. But what if that T-Rex is replaced by your co-worker, mother-in-law, or the eternal frustration of rush hour traffic? Suddenly, what was once a clever survival strategy becomes a ticking time bomb for disease because when you can't switch off the stress response, you're on a one-way road to health havoc. Mastering the art of flipping the stress switch off is crucial for a happy, healthy life. So my friends, let's explore how we can tame the stress dragon and reclaim control of our well-being. Your body can't live in emergency mode forever. Why? Well, if you're constantly revving up the engine for some external threat, there's no juice left inside for your growth and repair. Think of the sympathetic nervous system. That's your emergency system, your gas pedal in this grand car of life. Now, meet its counterpart, the parasympathetic nervous system. This one's all about relaxation, regeneration, and metabolism, the brake pedal. Now, here's where it gets interesting. If you're stuck in a perpetual stress zone, you might become addicted to the rush of chemicals that come with it. Just like an addict needs a fix, you might find yourself needing problems and challenges to keep that adrenaline rush going. People can get hooked on a life they don't even enjoy. Now our brains with that fancy neocortex can make thoughts more real than anything else. So just by thinking about your problems, you can kickstart the stress response. Crazy, right? And get this, those stress chemicals can become addictive you can literally become addicted to your own thoughts. Long-term exposure to stress hormones can hit the genetic buttons that trigger diseases. Yep, your thoughts can make you sick. Many diseases, from cancer to autoimmune issues, are linked to a compromised immune system, a result of chronic stress. Now for the big question, if your thoughts can make you sick, can they also make you well? Well, we did a study with 117 people, measuring their stress hormone cortisol and another defender chemical called IgA. When stress goes up and your energy is all focused on external threats, your immune system takes a hit. It dials down. So the real deal is, your thoughts have the power to influence not just your stress levels, but your overall health. It's time to wield that power wisely. Normally, when stress hits, the IgA levels drop, a sign that our immune system is taking a hit. But fear not, we've got a fascinating study to share. We took 117 brave souls through four days of emotional training. Imagine this, we asked them to swap survival emotions like anger, frustration, hatred, violence, aggression, and competition for something more uplifting. Yep. We wanted them to dive into heartfelt emotions, gratitude, appreciation, kindness, care, love for life, and joy for existence. For just 10 minutes a day, we told them to open their hearts and embrace those positive vibes. And guess what happened after three and a half days? The collective immune system, as measured by IgA levels, skyrocketed by about 50%. Meanwhile, cortisol levels, those stress hormones, dropped by a cool 16.25. Translation, less stress, more immune power. This tells us something profound. When you shift the way you think, feel, and open your heart to elevated emotions, 
you're actually jump-starting the restoration and repair of your immune system. So, here are three key things to remember when you're swimming in the sea of stress hormones. First, where you place your attention matters. When stress hits, your focus is all on the external, where to go, what to avoid, and how much time you've got. Your energy follows your attention, so if you're stuck in this 3D reality mindset, everything takes time. Second, stress shrinks your energy field. Yep, that invisible force around your body gets compressed when you're stressing out, making you more matter and less energy. You become laser-focused on the physical, playing by the rules of the material world. Finally, stress heightens your senses, making you a bit of a materialist. The more stressed you are, the more you focus on the physical world, narrowing your perspective and getting hooked into this habit of tunnel vision. So, here's the takeaway. When you're in survival mode, it's not the time to create, open your heart, or learn something new. The instinctive thought is that sitting still might make you pray. But fear not, my friends. We have the power to shift this mindset and thrive. It all starts with changing how we think and feel. The more we get hooked on stress hormones, the more our focus shifts to the material world, leading to a sense of separation from everything and everyone. Now, stress often creeps in when we feel like we're losing control, unable to predict outcomes, or when situations seem to be going downhill. In response, we try to control every aspect of our lives, seeking the familiar and known to feel secure. Survival mode kicks in, and the unknown becomes a scary place. As we shift our attention from one problem to another, each element activates specific neural networks in the brain. The chemicals released during this process drive the brain into an over-focused, analytical state, causing us to endlessly mull over the same problems. Ever notice how stress makes you obsess over a single issue? When living in a stressed state, our brain tends to lean towards worst-case scenarios. It's a survival tactic. Preparing for the worst increases our chances of survival. Unfortunately, this means we spend a significant portion of our lives preparing for the worst, dwelling on negative possibilities. Surprisingly, about 70% of the time, most people find themselves in this survival mode. When we react to someone or something, our emotional reaction creates a chemical refractory period. If we can't regulate or stop this emotional reaction, it turns into a mood, a temperament, or even a defining personality trait shaped by past experiences. So, when you're constantly living in stress, drawing from your energy field to fuel chemistry, you end up feeling more like matter than energy. This separation from others and everything around you becomes palpable. Now here's the real question. Is there anyone or anything truly worth living in this state? If you find yourself stuck in chronic stress, your energy field shrinks and you might feel disconnected from the world. When you're trying to change your material circumstances from a place of matter, you end up forcing outcomes, competing, fighting, manipulating, and feeling a sense of separation. The key revelation is that living in a stressed state isn't conducive to a fulfilling life. It's time to shift our mindset, break free from the chains of stress, and embrace a more connected and balanced way of living. You can live in a state called creation, the opposite of survival. When we're in survival mode, we're hyper-focused on our bodies, our environment, and the ticking clock. Achieving goals becomes a process of dragging ourselves through the motions. And yes, we may reach those goals, but it might take more effort and time. Now, enter the state of creation. It's like opening a door to a whole new world. Imagine shifting your attention away from your body, the people around you, and the material things you own. No more thinking about your phone, computer, or even the place you're in. Time takes a back seat. By disinvesting attention from this three-dimensional reality, something magical happens. We teach people to broaden their focus, to tune into the space, the energy, 
and the frequency beyond matter. Instead of dwelling on things, they focus on energy. As they open their awareness, brain activity slows down. They step beyond the analytical mind, suppressing the neocortex and turning off the autopilot of their known reality. Imagine different compartments of the brain syncing up like a well-orchestrated dance, bringing coherence to what was once chaotic. Here's a powerful example. A person with a stress-induced condition called Graves' disease and myasthenia gravis, experiencing double vision and a lack of energy. Realizing the role of her thoughts and emotions, she embarked on a journey to rewrite her story. As she overcame stress, her body found balance. Her vision cleared up, her thyroid hormones normalized, and she shifted her brain and body back into harmony. The lesson here is profound. By understanding the impact of stress, we can rewire our minds, create coherence, and guide our bodies back to balance. It's a journey from survival to creation, where healing becomes a natural outcome of restoring order and balance to our autonomic nervous system. Living in survival is like tapping into our animal instincts, characterized by stress, contraction, and the body's resources being drained in a process called catabolism. This survival mode breeds disease, imbalance, and degeneration within our bodies. In this state, fear, anger, and sadness reign as primary emotions, and our focus becomes narrow, fixated on our environment, body, and the ticking clock. We're caught in emergency mode, experiencing separation and limiting our reality to what our senses perceive. Now, shift gears with me to the creative state, the divine aspect within us. Here, the brain and body gracefully return to homeostasis, ushering in an expansion of energy and tissue repair. Anabolism takes the stage, promoting health, order, and regeneration. Elevated emotions like love, joy, trust, knowingness, and gratitude become the catalyst for repairing and revitalizing the body. In this heartfelt state, our selfish tendencies recede, making room for selflessness. Our attention shifts from our body, environment, and time to a more expansive focus. We step into a realm where possibilities abound, creating an atmosphere of growth and repair. Connectivity takes center stage, and the unknown transforms into an exciting adventure. Now, as we explore brainwave states in the upcoming episode, remember that living in creation involves consciously altering our brainwaves. It's a journey from coherence to incoherence, unveiling the magic that happens inside our heads. Join me in the next episode, where we transcend the ordinary and embrace the extraordinary. Did you notice that the universe doesn't speak English? The universe speaks frequency. Why? Because the frequency is the most honest of all languages. If you speak English, you could speak about something, but inside yourself, you could doubt it. But when we talk about frequency, you can't do that. If your mind, your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs are not aligned, you won't reach the desired frequency. Hence, you won't fool the universe. Everything around you, including you, has a frequency. It emits a very specific vibration. Money is a frequency. Success is a frequency. Desperation is a frequency. You know how anxiety feels, so you know its frequency. Do you know the frequency of money and success? Of course you do. Every person is unique, and in its uniqueness, everybody perceives success and abundance differently. No successful person feels the same as another. So how would you feel if you had all the success you want? You see, the secret is to see it and feel it as it's happening now. This is because everything is happening now in the present moment. Even tomorrow will happen as now. Yesterday, we perceived the current present moment as tomorrow, but it always happens as now. So to manifest success and money, you need to have it now. You might say, okay, I will start with this tomorrow, but you won't. Tomorrow will also come as the present moment, so whenever you do it, you'll do it now. So why not start with this right now? We all have connections with everything around us. You connect with your brain, your parents, 
your phone, your computer, where you live, and where you've been. Even what you'll do tomorrow is connected in your brain. Most of what's in your brain is based on what you know. I feel like I have a good connection with money. That's because I try to have good relationships with everything in my life. You've always got to have a good connection with yourself, right? I think so. I've never really felt like I didn't have enough, even when I was in college and had to get student loans. I always figured out a way to stay ahead. Most beliefs come from past experiences. When we're little, our brains are very open to information. We believe what we hear without thinking too much. The critical thinking part of our brain starts to develop when we're around 12. It's what keeps our conscious and subconscious minds separate. So, what we hear and see from our parents and surroundings as kids gets programmed into our subconscious. This is really important because if you hear things like money is the root of all evil or money is bad, it sticks in your mind. That information becomes a subconscious program, like an audio file playing in the background. Many people have money beliefs based on what they've been told or experienced. We pick up information from our surroundings and the stronger the emotion, the more our brain takes a snapshot of the moment as a memory. So, if you're feeling great and then something traumatic happens, your internal state changes, and that becomes a memory. Painful and joyful memories are equally powerful, but people often have more negative emotions. These come from stress hormones, which put us in a state of alert when something seems dangerous. Now think about how people connect with money. If you've had bad money experiences in the past, like losing money or not having enough, those emotions can make you feel like you lack money. It's okay to feel this way because it's just your past experiences changing your emotional state. The issue is that it becomes hardwired in your brain, like a computer program that keeps running. Our brains work based on past experiences and the feelings tied to them. Let's say you've felt a lack of something. Your body and mind react to this by waiting for something external to happen, like winning the lottery or getting married. When that event occurs, it brings an emotion, which takes away the feeling of lack. In our three-dimensional world, we often feel separated from others and things. You're here, the door is there, and you need to move through space to get to it. To reach your future desires, your brain predicts how far in the future it'll happen. This can be years or even decades. The problem is, many people get exhausted by the time the experience comes because they've waited for so long. So, you play the game. Go to school, work hard, save money, make choices, and gather things. The more you accumulate, the more successful and abundant you feel. But when you create from this feeling of lack and separation, you're always chasing the next thing and you might never have enough. When you see someone with something you want, you feel a lack of it. Your brain creates an image of you having that thing. But there's a gap between the thought and the actual experience, which we call time. There's another way, though. Instead of waiting for an external event to take away your lack, you can create from a different place. Feel gratitude, and healing begins. Feel worthy and abundant, and you generate wealth. Feel empowered, and you move toward success. Love yourself in life, and you create love. Be in awe of life, and you'll have mystical experiences. This is a different way of thinking about cause and effect. We can teach people to create from a different place, not from feeling like they lack something or are separate from it. We call this new place the quantum field. It's a bit like a secret world beyond what we can see, smell, taste, hear, or touch. It's invisible but connects everything physical. So how do you access this quantum field? You need to shift your attention away from your body, emotions, and everything around you. Forget about time, schedules, and yesterday's events. Just be in the present moment. This can change the way your brain works. It's like getting out of your usual self and stepping into a different world. We figured out a formula for this. When people become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, and in no time, 
they step out of the normal way of doing things, where you have to do something to get a result. From this place, the invisible quantum field becomes where everything in the material world comes from. But there's a trick to it. You need to make your brain work in harmony. When your brain works smoothly, like a strong signal, it's better. If this information resonates with you, subscribe to our channel and never miss our new videos. Let me explain what I mean by a strong signal. Imagine your brain is like a stormy sky. When you're stressed, it's because you can't predict what's going to happen and you think it's going to get worse. In this state, your brain goes into high alert mode and it's not good. It's like a lightning storm in the sky. Your thoughts start jumping all over the place. This is not a strong signal. It's like static on the radio. When your brain is in this state, you're always looking for the worst case scenario. Your brain gets all jumbled up and this can mess up your body too. It's like when you're super focused on a problem and you can't stop thinking about it. But our research shows that this makes your brain worse and it pushes you out of balance. So creating from a place of stress and negative emotions isn't good. It makes your brain and body go out of whack. To create from the quantum field, you need a more balanced brain, like a strong and clear signal on the radio. It's a different way of making things happen. If someone's been living like this for a long time, feeling stuck in their ways, they usually don't realize how to change. Often, it takes a crisis or something big like a trauma, breakdown, loss, or a major life change to wake them up. They need a jolt to start looking at things differently. Now, when we talk about money, success, and abundance, you need to create a strong signal in the quantum field. To do this, teach people to shift their focus away from the physical world and separation. Instead, they need to broaden their attention and focus on nothing, which might sound a bit strange. This shift in focus on space, without thinking, can actually slow down their brain waves and make their brain work better. When the brain becomes more synchronized and all parts communicate, it sends out a powerful signal into the field. But having a strong signal is just one piece of the puzzle. You also need a clear intention. When you combine a clear intention with a coherent brain, you can make your thoughts feel more real than anything else. You can imagine being wealthy, abundant, or having everything you need. Here's the thing, though. It takes practice because people who've been stuck in a lack mentality usually feel unworthy, insecure, and frustrated. They're impatient because they want things to change quickly. But when you shift your focus and practice feeling how you'd feel when your future happens, like feeling free, joyful, or grateful, it changes your energy. You see, when you're stuck in feelings like resentment and frustration, it's like stepping on both the gas and brake pedals at the same time. It messes up your heart's rhythm and makes your brain incoherent. So, to create from a better place, you need to lay down your old habits and feelings of survival and trust in the future. If you try to create from survival emotions, it might work, but it'll take a long time, and you'll be constantly pushing and competing. It's like trying to change one piece of matter with another piece of matter, and it's a never-ending game. So everybody seems to be in a race to gather the most stuff, right? They equate abundance with having a lot of things. And if that's what you want, that's okay. But let's dive into the formula of how to create differently. You need to feel the emotions of your desired future before it even happens. To do this, you must take your focus away from this everyday reality. Forget about everything you know and understand that the field creates matter and matter emits the field. Got it? Once you get there and change your energy with a clear intention and elevated emotions, your heart will start beating beautifully. And here's the magic part. Your heart sends a signal to your brain that it's safe to create. Then you can relax into the present moment and become a creation machine. So now, you have a coherent brain, a powerful signal, and a heart that draws your desired future closer. When your energy matches the potential in the quantum field and you feel abundant, your thoughts can come true. But remember, abundance isn't just about money. 
It's about the qualities you embody. It's not about the wealth itself, but who you become in the process. Here's the tricky part. Don't wait for something to happen before you feel grateful. In the quantum world, you need to feel it to create it. When you're stuck in negative emotions, your body resists change because you're dwelling in the past. So, you practice this new mindset and really understand it, just like you'd practice a sport or a dance. You get good at it. And as you practice, you'll start feeling abundant without waiting for your bank account to prove it. As you keep tuning into that potential, watch out for synchronicities and opportunities. The universe will let you know that you're on the right path. And the point here is to remember that you're not a victim of your life. You're the creator. Stop blaming your circumstances and external factors for how you feel. Change your relationship with lack. Stop creating it and create abundance instead. The experiment is to shift from the victim mindset to the creator mindset, where you understand that you're the one shaping your reality. So create from the field, find coherence in your heart and brain, and remember you're the master of your own life. So let's say you start noticing synchronicities in your life. They're like signals telling you to use that energy and those feelings you have. It's like a hint from the universe saying, hey, you're on the right track, so keep it up. When you see these synchronicities, it's time to take action. Maybe you get a promotion, an unexpected email, or meet someone who can help you. These are all signs that you're gaining momentum. To create abundance, you need to generate it. Abundance doesn't just happen by accident. You have to make it. So imagine you spend an hour meditating and feeling your abundant future. Great. But if you spend the other 15 hours of your day thinking about lack, don't expect much to change. You've gone back to your old habits and you're back in the victim mindset. Now, here's the secret sauce. Your personality creates your personal reality. If you want a different reality, you have to change your personality. And most of your personality operates on autopilot, thanks to unconscious programs, thoughts, habits, and feelings that are wired in. But the first step to change is to become aware of these unconscious thoughts. When you catch yourself thinking, I'm not worthy, or it'll never work, it's just a thought. You don't have to believe it. Be curious about what's on the other side of that thought. Remember, when you keep moving past those negative thoughts, they lose their power over you. So, Changing your personality starts with being conscious of your thoughts and not being a victim to them. People often wake up thinking about their problems, not enough money or past issues with certain people and places. This is a problem because you're living in the past when you think about these things. The moment you remember these problems, you're creating a loop of negativity. Remember, thoughts are the language of your brain and feelings are the language of your body. When you keep dwelling on past problems, you're conditioning your body to feel the same negative emotions over and over, and your body thinks it's living that negative past reality, even though you're trying to move forward. So, changing your mindset means moving beyond these old thoughts and feelings. If you always think about your problems and scarcity, you'll miss out on opportunities, even if they're right in front of you. Now, let's talk about abundance. If you're feeling lack, you can't expect to attract abundance. It's like carrying your old negative story with you. To create a new personality with a new personal reality, you have to let go of lack, unworthiness, and the old stories you've been carrying. Don't be a prisoner to your old conditioning. How do you do that? By catching yourself when you default to your old mindset and realizing you can change. How many times will you have to catch yourself and choose a new mindset? Well, as many times as it takes until you stop defaulting to the old one. The key here is to shift your thinking and start creating from a place of change. Remember, it's not about healing. It's about changing your mindset to create a new reality, including abundance. So, you need to be aware of your thoughts and feelings, change your personality, and look at what needs to change to achieve abundance. 
When you want abundance, it's important to understand that it's not just about having more stuff. It's about changing yourself, your habits, and your thoughts. The more you change for the better, the more abundance you can have. So instead of asking, why am I not abundant? Focus on what needs to change in your life. It's about shifting your mindset and creating a new you. You need to become aware of your thoughts and behaviors. Think of meditation as a way to sit quietly with yourself without distractions like phones or social media. It's a time to watch your thoughts, especially when you're feeling lack. Instead of trying to push the feeling of lack away, sit with it and be curious about it. What's on the other side of that feeling? Lack can be so deep-rooted that your body and mind are programmed to stay in that state. But you can lower the emotional intensity every time you notice lack. Be prepared for cravings to go back to your old habits, just like any addiction. Changing your life starts with making different choices, and it's going to feel uncomfortable and unfamiliar. Your body will push you back to what's familiar, even if it's not good for you. But remember, making a different choice is key to breaking free from the old mindset. So, if you want to be abundant, ask yourself, what would an abundant person do or think? People who have truly become abundant have learned to overcome their past mistakes and limitations. They've become different people in the process. They give, not because they lack, but because they know it multiplies abundance. So, don't just focus on having more stuff. Focus on becoming a different, better you. That's where real abundance comes from. The true abundance isn't just about gathering more material things. It's about changing yourself from the inside out. When you shift your thoughts, feelings, and habits, you open the door to abundance. Abundance isn't just wealth. It's the process of becoming a better version of yourself. So when you're on your journey to abundance, focus on change, not just the end result. Explore your thoughts and emotions, especially when you feel lack. Be prepared for discomfort, as change is not always easy. It might be tempting to revert to old habits, but making different choices is the key to unlocking real abundance. I hope you found value in this video. If this resonates with you, subscribe to our channel and never miss our life-changing videos. In the end, abundance is not just about having more, it's about being more. When you change who you are, the abundance you seek will naturally flow into your life. So start your journey with curiosity, determination, and the understanding that the true treasure lies in becoming the best version of yourself.